I'm so sorry. Look in these cards. You feel it? Yes. Come play. Okay. Gotta be mayor of this place. Someone told me the mayor likes to dabble in opium. A lot of dabble. Hello.
Coming with me, Stricker! Are you supposed to be elbows?
Let's go. Some bastard outlaw just robbed me. Please, can you stop him? your money back you are a saint and a scholar here's a token of my gratitude in his food? Mm -hmm. I heard the same thing. I did. Professor! Oh, it's you, dear boy. Come in, come in, and shut the door. What's going on? You leaving? Yes, sir, yes, I am, sir. Do you know, do you know the thing? The thing that is vital, without which scholarship cannot proceed, sir? No, I don't. Not having a bullet in your flipping neck, sir! I am not cut out for this. No, I'm not cut out for this at all! <laughs> Savages! Savages! I think we all are. Not me, sir. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a professor at Yale. I write books. I do not deserve to die out here. Where's my tincture? Oh, yes. You okay, professor? Oh, dandy, sir. Just dandy. Ah. Uh, uh. 
Ah. Oh, great heavens above! Is that you, John? Hello, Dutch. <laughs> I think that's what they call two for the price of one out here in this wonderful place. Maybe so, Dutch. You and, and, and your friend there, the professor? We're gonna kill the both of you. Why you wanna do a thing like that? I don't know. Sport, I guess. Fair enough. Uh, why don't I come out there? We fight. Let the professor go and send your boys back to their families. Well, that, that sounds like a beautiful plan, John. Only problem is, my boys here, they already lost their families a long time ago. We aren't thieves, John. <laughs> we're fighting for something a, a bit like you. Only we're fighting for an idea, not just for ourselves. That's beautiful, Dutch. You always were a fine speaker. I was. Now, would you Kindly send that academic out here so we can show him what we really think about the art of anthropology. Please, sir, what are we going to do? I'm going to hand you over to him and watch him tear you limb from limb. What? I'm just kidding. We're going to run across the rooftops. Get you back to your ivory tower. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. We're still here. Come on. <laughs> Good day, sir. Uh, madam. Look here, sir. What is the meaning of this, this outrage? You two stay down and shut up. This way. Follow me! John! Help me, John! One more move, and he's a dead man. <laughs>
think that's most of them. The coast looks clear. Come on, then! Let's make a break for it! The horses should be in an alleyway down here! Research is complete. Much as I thought, there's no civilizing this savage land. I could have told you that for nothing. Ah, but they'll give me a prize in New Haven for this. <laughs> well, they bloody better. Well, goodbye, Mr. Marston. Best of luck, dear friend. So long, Professor. So long, sir.
under me. Hi there. All genuine stuff here. Thanks for the visit. Another satisfied customer. Here, the Blackwater Ledger is going to print about a big fire in the east. Nice doing business with you. That's good, thank you. Thanks for stopping by. I'll just say one thing, I will ask you to pay for anything. Hello. What do you want, Marston? My family. I've done what you asked. <laughs> no, you haven't. This is the land of opportunity, and I gave you the opportunity to save your family, and you failed. 
How could I possibly reward you? Marston, you're a public menace. We should have had you killed. I wish you had. But since you didn't, where's my family? Oh, spare me the noble savage fall on the sword tripe, will you? Oh, boy, it's nauseating. You don't wish to be dead. You're an insignificant creature desperately clinging on to life like the rest of the scum in this town. Yeah, I know, it's tough. You like Dutch. He's a charming fellow. He makes sense. He's like one of those nature writers from back east. Only he takes things a tiny little step too far. Rather than just loving the flowers and the animals and the harmony between man and beast, <laughs> he shoots people in the head for money and disagreeing with them. He's a goddamn killer. Now, I'm not a great intellect, but the metaphysical leap from admiring the flower to shooting a man in the head because he doesn't like the flower is a leap too far. So, I know it's easy. <laughs> you see, we, me and Archer, we're the bad guys. We enforce the rules. Now, while the rules may not be perfect, they're really not so bad. Exactly. What's the alternative? Yeah. See, I'll tell you what the alternative is. It's not complicated. It's about one man and his gun versus another man. <laughs> sure. Civilization may be dull, but the alternative, Mr. Marston, is hell. And the way you enforce this civilization, this freedom for men to like or not like flowers, or whatever in God's name you were just talking about, is to kidnap a man's wife and son? Well, I know there's contradictions. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, as I said, I'm not a great intellect. Now, after the debacle with the army and the bank, we have to put Mr. Vanderlyn to rest ourselves. Will you help us? Do I have any choice? Now that you mention it, no. Then what was that pretty speech in aid of? I don't rightly know, but it sure felt good saying it. <laughs> Shall we, Mr. Marston? Let's go. We can put this to rest once and for all, shall we? Go quick! Take a look at this thing! Have you seen this? It's got a gun on the back! In all my more days, I never seen such a Iron Dragon! That's the devil working They told me about these! The Army's been building them in secret! Oh my god! This killing machine of yours seems to be turning a few heads. Our armed forces have no equal. We have made incredible progress the past few years. Is that what you and call this it? This isn't much more than a simple prototype. You should see what they're working on in Virginia. Soon there will be no war we can't win. The Army has made camp a little way outside town. They put word out a large cache of ammunition and food is stored there. Vandalin's gang needs constant supplies, so that should be enough to draw him in. No mistakes this time. You hear me, Marston? I thought you were talking to Fordham.
What's the word, Captain? We spotted one of Dutch's men about an hour ago. I think he took the bait. Let's get in position, then. Have your men ready to run them down, if you have to. Dismiss! Load weapons and get to the sandbags! Move! Are you ready to finish this, Mr. Marston? I guess so. Fingers on the triggers, boys!
Well, Mr. Marston, it seems like your mentor, Dutch, no longer looks quite so kindly to a student. That man is insane. So it seems. I think we need to get him before sundown. As you say, Captain. Otherwise, he'll be gone again. And what if I say no? <laughs> now, before I shoot you myself, let me just point out the obvious. The one person we have left that can appeal to Mr. Vanderlyn is the last person we know who knows him. Your wife. That won't be necessary. Mr. Ross, Captain, let's go. <clears throat> Mount up, men. Let's move out. Go. Whoa there! I can't believe Vanderlyn has built himself a fortress in the mountains. He's crazy, but he certainly ain't stupid. You've already seen that place, right? McDougal told me you went up there with that Indian chap. I've seen it, all right. We'll be lucky to last five minutes with this many men. Governor Johns is going to be very pleased. Nate Johns? What's he got to do with any of this? Let's just say he has a vested interest in cleaning the filth out of this region. I don't think our old friend Dutch realizes what a great favor he has done us. Exciting all this hate among the natives. Like you needed an excuse. See, this is what happens when you fraternize the savages. How could you ever follow a man like that? How could you ever follow a man like Ross? Vanderlyn is a psychopath. A murderer and a rapist. Ross don't seem too different. Dutch was a good man once. A far better man than you. So what made him this way? I don't know. Bastards like you. Seeing that things never change. I'll be ready to finish this mess. Anything to get you sons of bitches off my back. There's always somebody watching, Mr. Marston. I thought you'd have gleaned that much by now. You think you're so clever, don't you? No, it's you who thought you were clever. You thought you could just walk away from your old life. Make no mistake, we have been watching. Don't speak to me. You're really an ungrateful slug, Marston. All we need now is Father Christmas. Instead of punishing you for your crimes, we are giving you a chance to kill the men who betrayed you. You didn't have to punish my wife, too. Oh, please. She's hardly innocent. Don't you talk about her like that. Oh, I would never talk ill of dear Abby. Do you call her Abby or Abigail? I prefer Abby. No, I like the woman. A little rough for my taste, but very pleasant. I can't wait to put a bullet in your head. When will this be over? It's you who's been dragging it out, not us. We sent you to Fort Mercer with the simple task of killing Bill Williamson. Next thing you know, you're running all over Mexico like a headless chicken. And now it's Dutch. But he's the last one of your merry band, is he not? Then you can go back to your farm, or what's left of it. If need be, you can always send your wife back out to work. I hear she works hard. Go to hell! This old gang of yours just won't die easily, will it? I wonder how many deaths you are all responsible for. How much money you took from pockets of hard-working citizens? We did more for the people with the money we took than the damn government ever did. Good God! This flawed philosophy yours again. If you wish to argue the finer points of ethics, I suggest you learn to read first. And I suggest you learn how to shoot people in the front, not the back.
So you're the one who's gonna kill him? Dutch? Yep, that's what they keep telling me. You, blow that gate open. Move, soldier.
Right, Marston. We'll take two men with us. The rest will stay here and take care of the wounded. They'll plant charges at the gate. You and I will provide the cover fire. All right, men. Blow that gate open. Get ready to hold off their fire, Marston. Hold them off! We need time to set the explosives! Son of a bitch! It's a miracle you fools aren't dead already! What are you already? doing? Shoot them! We lost one! Keep up the fire!
can't erase the past, John. Killing me, it won't make it go away. That's where you're wrong. Hello again, John. Hello, Dutch. We gotta stop meeting like this. Sure. I got a plan, John. You always got a plan, Dutch. This is a good one. I don't doubt it. We can't always fight nature, John. We can't fight change, can't fight gravity. We can't fight nothing. My whole life, all I ever did was fight. Then give up, Dutch. But I can't give up, neither. I can't fight my own nature. That's a paradox, John. You see, then I have to shoot you. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. They have to. Because they have to justify their wages. That's their business. Our time has passed, John. So at the end, you didn't have the guts to shoot him. The man's dead, Ross. Sure. Can I see your gun? Hmm. Oh, trust me. It looks better in the report that way. Where's my family? Uh, your wife was killed in a prison riot last week. So, <laughs> I'm only joking, dear boy. They were sent back to that Scrabble ranch of yours in Beecher's Hope. They're quite safe and sound. They better be. Thank you, Mr. Marston, for everything. I know this wasn't easy for you, but I have to say, You've done your country proud. Yeah, exactly. See you around, John. Try to stay out of trouble. Come on, Archer. Let's go find somebody else we can annoy. <laughs> 